welcome to Hearts Connected. And we are broadcasting directly from uh, Venice, Florida. My name is Joy McInnes, and I would like to welcome you today as we study the Word of God. Shall we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, we are excited, God, of what you have for us today. We ask that you speak to us today through your Word. And Holy Spirit, just open up our hearts to receive from you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Anyway, today, I would like to share about the wise and the foolish builder. Hmm, wise and foolish builder. Yes, you heard me right. So let's go to the Word of God. And it's actually from the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. Come on, let's read the Word, okay? Therefore, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rains came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crush. You know, we're very familiar with this song, The foolish man built his house upon the sand. You know, you remember Sunday school song and then, uh, the wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rains came tumbling down. And then what does the song say? The rains came down and the floods came up. And so you know the story. The rains came down, the floods came up. And so both of these men, the wise and the foolish men, they are called builders. They're builders, okay? And that refers to you and me. We're both builders. We're all builders in this life. Every day, we're building. We're choosing what material am I using. Uh, we're choosing what kind of uh, uh, foundation am I going to build on. So we're all builders. And we know at the end of the story, like what we read in Scripture, that the one who built upon the sand, the house, phew, went splat. But the one who built upon the rock, when the winds came, the waters rose, the house stood firm. Amen? Because it was built on the, on the rock. Now, to understand this parable a little bit better, we need to understand also about the terrain in Palestine at that time. Now, Palestine is covered with hills and valleys. And in the winter and even into early springs, there would be heavy mountain rains that would come. And this would cause uh, the peaceful Jordan River to swell and to overflow along the river banks. And so anything that is built on the river bank, you know, the, when the flash floods would come, you know, would be, would be uh, uh, destroyed under the pressure of the storm. So that is the, a little bit of a history there. So let's consider the builders in this story that we read here. So like I said a while ago, all of, all of us are builders. All of us are builders. Every day of our life, we are building the foundation of our life. There, there's two builders. Like we said, we have the wise builder. Now the wise builder, he heard the words of Jesus. And what did he do? He acted on them. So he heard and he acted. He heard and he obeyed. So this wise builder is a very practical man because he knew the words and the teachings of Jesus. He knew that they were of no value unless he applies it in his life. You got it? And he was also a very diligent or a hardworking man. Now Luke 6, 48 says, he is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on a rock. So the wise builder, he didn't mind working extra hard, dig digging extra deeper. You know, it's hard to build on a rock because it's hard. Uh, it, you need to work harder 
as you dig deeper. But then he knew the benefit of doing that. That's why he persevered. He worked hard. He didn't give up. And he has a strong foundation for his house. So this is the wise builder. Maybe you're thinking, I am just like that wise builder. Well, good for you if you feel that you are a wise builder. Now, the second builder is the foolish builder. The foolish builder, what did he do? He heard what the word of Jesus said said but what he did not act on them he ignored the word of jesus he heard the same truth that the wise builder heard but he was foolish enough not to apply it on his life now the foolish man labored and yet we know what was the end right his house collapsed what he was doing probably is he was taking a shortcut he was taking a shortcut sometimes we do one, oh, we were almost tempted like to make a shortcut because it's work, it's hard work. I've been working for years, you know, and then and you feel that you just want to get promoted, you want to get easy gain, and you do something not right, right? Just to gain money or gain position. So in the end, there would be a price to pay, my friend. So there are two types of builder. Like I said, the wise and the foolish. So what kind of a builder are you? Come on, be honest. What kind of a builder are you? Are you a foolish builder who heard what Jesus said but you disregard it? Or are you one of the wise builder who heard and listened to what Jesus said and paid attention? I just had a, a teaching on this about paying attention on the word of God, how important it is, how it could cost you your life if you don't pay attention. You know, someone once said, is the sermon finished? Is the sermon done yet? So this elder lady who was coming out of the church said, No, no, the sermon has been preached, but it remains to be done. So, so true. The, the sermon has been preached, the lesson has been shared, but we need to do it. We need to apply it in our life. Okay, so we considered already the builders, my friend. Now let us consider the foundation. Now the foundation is the most important part of the house. The purpose of the house is really to provide shelter, correct? To pro provide protection and security well, from bad elements, from dangers, correct? So that when we sleep at night, we know that we're secure inside the house when we're sleeping. You know that not no evil could come in. So if the house could not provide protection, security, then what good is the house, right? If you're living in a house and you're not sure that when the rains come, that it will be able to withstand uh, a typhoon, then you will be, uh, you will have no peace at all staying in that house. So the foundation is very, very important when you're building the house. Now the condition of the foundation will determine the strength of the house itself. If your foundation is weak, so you know what it means. The house will be weak. So if the foundation is strong, then your house will be good. So we have only two foundations to choose from. The sand. And what is the nature of the sand? Sands are temporary. They are changeable. They are unreliable. Soft. They are weak. How about the rock? The nature of the rock is permanent. It is constant. It is reliable. And it is strong. You know, I was reminded of this uh, old hymn where it says, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. So only Christ is the solid foundation that we could build our life all other all other things all other things they are sinking sin so christ is laid for a foundation and everything besides christ is sin and we know already i just shared with you the nature of sin it is unreliable it is temporary it is weak it is changeable and we do not want to build our house we don't want to build our life on sands, okay? On sand. So let's, let's, uh, let's look for a moment here. 
what are examples of this sinking sense? Well, if we build our life primarily to gain material possessions and prosperity, you know, to the point that nothing else matters, then it becomes a sinking sand for us. How about worldly pursuits? How about endeavors? You're so driven. You're so driven to excel in your career that you're not mindful of how you're doing it, the, the way you're pursuing it, your attitude as you're going about it. Then it's becoming a sinking sand. How about your pursuit for acceptance, popularity, and prestige to the point that you're blinded. There's no humility anymore. There's no humility. You're prideful. You are, uh, you're insensitive. You become insensitive to other people. Then those have become sinking sand for you. How about, uh, there's so many things. So anything that is uh, not built on the foundation of Christ. Those are sinking sin. And sometimes, you know, God becomes very last in our priority. And that is very sad when he should be first. I, one of my favorite verse, and I love this verse, is, you know, if we seek God and his kingdom first, God and his kingdom first, all these things shall be added unto us. You know, if you seek God and his kingdom first, if you are in need you know, God is such a good God, my friend. He's a good, good Father. He does not only give us what we need, which He promised He would, but sometimes He gives us, He also gives us the desires of our heart. You know, He's a lavish Father. He wants to bless us. So if we pursue Him and His righteousness and His kingdom and His righteousness, then all these other things that we desire, God will take care of that for us. Amen? He's a good God, and he's such a just God as well. You know, there was a, I read a story. There was this rich lady. Uh, he dreamed that, uh, she dreamed, rather, that she died, and she was taken up into heaven. And then she was given an angel to escort her to her new home. Okay? So she dreamed that the angel took her, as they were journeying towards where her new home is, they were past, walking past this big, elegant, oh, wow, nice palatial homes. And then the angel, as they passed one of, this, the, one of the nicest homes on that, on that area, the angel said, you know, this house right here, this is the mansion of your servant who died just last year. And so the, the rich woman got excited, you know, if my servant got this big home, oh, I'm excited, I'm excited for my house. So anyway, she, the angel and the lady continued in their journey, and soon as they went around the corner, they stopped in front of a small shack. And the angel said, welcome, here is your new home. And she looked at the shack and said, is this all? Is this all? I was a very wealthy woman. I have a, a very wealthy family on earth. Well, the angel explained very patiently, this is all you sent up here. This is all you sent up here. And the lady woke up from her dream and realized she needed to make some changes in her life. You know, everything that we do here now Everything, everything that we do in the here and the now, they have eternal value. They have eternal value and they have eternal consequences. That is why it's so important that we cannot afford to be foolish or to be ignorant. The life that is built on a proper relationship with Christ will stand the test of Christ's judgment at the end of this life. You know, at the end of this life, God says he will reward us, you know, and, and, and God is a just God. God is a just God. You know, if God will give us, uh, uh, you know, at the end of our life and God will, will give us a reward, it's exactly what we deserve, right? Because he's a just God. So again, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. This is a command. This scripture is a command. It is as much as a command than when God says, Thou shalt not steal or thou shalt not kill. So we are commanded 
to seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. So, okay, let's, we considered the builders, the two builders, wise and foolish. We considered the foundation. We could build on the sand and we could, or we could build on the rock. And let's consider the storm. Oh, let's consider the storm. There is a storm that is coming that will test every man's work. Now, what is the nature of the storm? Now, in, in the story that we read, the storm came to both what? The wise and the foolish builder. The storm will come to all of us, whether you're a believer or an unbeliever, the storms will come. And what is the nature of the storm? The storm is impartial. The storm beat on both houses, you know? The storm is impartial, whether you are a man, a woman, a child, whether you are rich or poor, whether you are learned, you are not learned, you are not educated, whether you are a youngster, a middle-aged, or an older person, the storms of life are impartial. They will come. They will come. Okay, so that's one of the nature of the storm. The storm are not just inevitable, meaning we cannot avoid them, but they are uncontrollable. They will come. Sometimes uh, they would come like a, a torrential rain, rainstorm coming in sheets. Sometimes some people would say, what's going on in my life? It's like one after the other. Uh, things are bad things or what's, what, are, what you perceive to be bad things are happening in your life. You know, we cannot control the floods or the blowing of the winds or the, 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 the up downpour of the rain. But, you know, 1 Peter 4 verses 12 to 13 says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial that you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the suffering of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. You know, when we came to the, know the Lord, we became partakers of Christ's suffering. But, you know, God, we, we should be encouraged because God will never leave us alone. And he will never give us beyond what we can bear as well. He will give us the strength, the encouragement, whatever it is that we need as we go through the different testings in life. If you're going through health issues right now, hold on, cling on to God's promises. He said he is your healer. He said that he is your strength and your help. Cling on, hold on to his word. If you're going through financial destruction right now or fi financial turmoil, Okay, assess your life. Maybe you are not a good steward of God's money or resources. Maybe you're not tithing. You're not giving back to God what rightfully belongs to Him. Maybe you are not uh, using the money wisely. Okay, so we need, we need to understand that when the storms of life comes, God said, if we belong to Him, he will sustain us and he will make a way of escape escape and even if you say let's just say you 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 are suffering physically to to the point of death well you are just graduating early to be with the lord amen so you your loved ones would miss you but you would be to be absent in the body is to be present with the lord right and the storms would also reveal the foundation the storms will reveal the foundations. You know what? I have heard so many testimonies of uh, people who does not uh, belong to the Lord, who says, you know, who says to those who, who are Christians, you know what? I don't understand you. you. You're going through so much trials and persecutions, and yet you're still happy. You're still joyful. You're still positive. Because we know that we cannot do it in our own strength. And we rely upon the Lord. Amen? We rely upon the Lord. So the storms of life will reveal the foundation. It will reveal the foundation. It will reveal how we've been building our life. Amen? So godly families today, like I said, they are not immune to the storms of life. 
the present storms may be sickness, like I said, the death of a loved ones, or you may be going marital troubles or divorce, or maybe your child is uh, just off to the path of destruction with his life. Maybe your business is taking a financial setback. Maybe you're dealing with broken relationships, and the list can be on and on and on and on. And you know what? The hurts, the struggles are real, but also the promises of God are even more real than that. The promises of God for us are yes and amen, that He is our strength in times of trouble, that He is our help, that He is there. To, he's our anchor. He's our firm foundation. So just trust on God's word. Go through the word of God. If you're going through some storms right now, go to the word of God. Read the word of God. Claim his promises. Speak it out. Apply it in your life. Amen? So the storms will reveal the foundation. And hopefully, it will reveal a good foundation in our life. So who is considered wise in our story here, in our lesson? The one who is considered wise is the one who hears and obeys the word of God. You know we've been given the word of God. We've been given the Bible. And the Bible is like a manufacturer's manual. You know, every time you buy a new TV or a new cell phone or a new um, keyboard, there's always an instructional manual that comes with it, right? And hopefully we're, you read it. You read. Sometimes we don't. We just kind of like, oh, let me just set, try how this works. And then sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work, right? But the manufacturer, the purpose of the manufacturer's manual is to instruct us on how to use the product, okay? It tells us uh, the do's and the don'ts, you know? We should not wipe it with water or we should not uh, put it, uh, uh, plug it in, uh, you know, without a, or in the wrong currency or ACDC, or it tells us also the benefits of the product. So the same way that the Word of God, the Word of God, this is our instructional manual in this life. We can never venture, I hope you're not venturing in this life without your manufacturer's manual. We need the manufacturer, manufacturer's manual. You know, uh, my husband and I, Pastor Jim and I, we like watching this old TV uh, sitcom called Home Improvement. You know, and this, this um, uh, the person who is like the lead character in the show is called Tim Taylor. Oh, but this Tim Taylor, he doesn't use the manual at all. Because he thinks he's smart enough. He could get by with, without reading the manual. So what happens? He ends up hurting himself. And he, hurt, he ends up hurting people around him. And he wastes a lot of money. He wastes a lot of materials. Because he messes things up. He doesn't read the manual. Okay? And, he, and more importantly, he makes a fool of himself. And we don't want to make a fool of ourselves, right? Now, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17 says that all scripture, all, meaning all, 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 from the beginning to the end of the Bible, all scripture is God-breathed and it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good word. So the word of God is God breathed. It is inspired by God. It is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 40 and 8 says, The grass withers, the flowers fades, but the word of God stands forever. So an encouragement to us is regardless of what's going on in our life, what's going on in our life, the storms of life that you may be facing, I'm not minimizing any of it. Not at all, my friends. I know I cannot even begin to imagine your heartache. I mean, your struggle. You know, just the pressure that you're probably facing. But I do would like to point you to the Word of God. The Word of God is our instructional manual so we could be sustained in this life. And so that we would know how to overcome and to come out victorious at the other end of our problems. Amen? So when we are in trouble... You know, a lot of people say, you know, um, oh, I've just been diagnosed with, let's just say, I've been diagnosed with such and such. 
Why don't we go to the doctor? Why don't we go to the specialist? And then when they've done everything else and then nothing's working, why don't we pray? So it's, it, it, it's almost like prayer becomes a last resort. When, when, the, when the diagnosis came, the first thing that the person should do is, okay, okay, I don't like this report from the doctor. Let's pray right now. Let's come before God. Let's pray, pray, pray. Put God first. But the thing is, sometimes we put God last. We try all the other things that we could still humanly possibly do. And then when nothing else works, then we turn to God. Then we turn to God. God's word is our compass in this life. It directs us, it guides us, it encourages us, it rebukes us. So the, who is considered wise again? The one who hears the word of God and obeys. The one who who hears the word of God and trusts him and obeys the word of God. Amen? Amen. So anyway, so how do we build a well-built life? Those are the two things. Very simple. We must hear the word of God or read the word of God, and we must obey the word of God. You know, I, I, I just love the word of God, my friend, because it's life unto us. So. As we close this show, as we close this program, remember, we started with the two builders. That's you and me. All of us here in this life, we're building. But we have a choice. Are we going to be a foolish builder or are we going to be a wise builder? So my prayers is that we would choose right. We would go choose right, build on the right foundation, use the right materials, use every resources that we have, that God has already provided for us. And when the storms of life come, when the storms of life come, we will overcome and we will stand. Amen? So let us pray. Father, we thank you for this word. We ask that you bless, bless us, Lord God, as we meditate on your word today. Speak to us through your word. Help us to choose right and to be a wise builder of our life. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you guys. God bless you, everyone. Until next time, again, I will see you next time and have a wonderful week. Take care and God bless. Show the hope, show the dream, everything that's meant to be when you shine.